Oh, come on. There's no way he's going to try to fix that. That's just ridiculous. Why would you even try? Yes, folks, we've got a Martin. This is an XL Black Little Martin made in Mexico. This is one of those laminate guitars. Feels just like a school desk. And I think it hit the floor pretty hard, probably bounced off the tail pin, caused a chain reaction, knocked the top free, and the bracing came loose. And we've got this great big gaping hole. Luckily, I have the piece that goes in there. Yeah, I know it's supposed to be a disposable guitar, but I, I think we should probably get in the habit of thinking there is no such thing anymore. From my perspective, every, everything should be fixable, from your shoes to your cell phone. We're just, we're entering an age where we can no longer afford to just toss stuff like this into a landfill. So let's see if we can fix it. And uh, this is my first foray into this whole thing. Looking inside here, we've got loose braces all the way up into the upper bout. The X brace is mostly free. Interestingly enough, the it wasn't the adhesive that popped free from the top. It's still in, in place. There's a thin skim of wood. So it's actually the wood that failed rather than the glue, which is interesting. I bet you we could probably just glue this thing back together using regular wood glue. But I imagine I'm going to use epoxy instead. Um, just for a number of reasons. I, you know, I don't quite trust this. I don't know what's going on there. And in terms of this big gaping hole in the top, this is really thin. It's like 16th of an inch and it's reasonably floppy. What I'll do is um, make a piece of spruce or something that'll go underneath the margin of the brake and try to shore it up and keep it from coming apart again. And then we'll glue the sides back in position using regular spool clamps. So, um, we should probably try to save the skull. It's from Hollywood Beach, Florida. So, see if we can take that off. The sticker was pretty obstinate and didn't want to let go. I had to warm it up with the heat gun before the adhesive would free itself. And when I was pulling it off there, it stretched a bit, which was annoying, but what can you do? Then I got inside with a very long, very tapered stick to apply some slow cure epoxy to the X-brace arms. I used a combination of clamps through the sound hole and also jacks from the inside of the guitar to get it all clamped up. So the X-braces are clamped up to their ends now. They're, they're fully glued and I can turn my attention to this great big gaping hole. In one sense it's a nice break in that we have this long leading edge here that's at an angle and it's almost like a scarf joint. The two angles complement each other and hold things together pretty nicely and uh, it keys into itself pretty well. Now, there's always going to be a scar, we know that, but at least it's going to be relatively flat, we hope. The main thing is trying to find a way to clamp it flat while it dries. And I was just looking at the back here, and there are remnants of the tail block and the lining. So what I've done is I've made a spruce patch. It'll go along like this. And when this is in position, I'll have a place to clamp to. So I'm clamping for both the top and the bottom, hopefully keep things relatively flat. So I'm spreading some epoxy around, trying to be as neat as possible. The inside surface is very rough. It feels like it's designed specifically to make a good mechanical adhesion with epoxy or polyurethane glue or something. So I clamped it up using these little toggle clamps. And um, after that it's set up, I managed to get everything in position and clamp together with a whole lot of clamps, both spool clamps, F clamps, there's a support clamp on the inside and others through the sound hole. Just peeling some tape here. Happy with the way that kept the epoxy off the top. And just looking at the area of the crack, <clears throat> I had that covered up with some wax paper so I couldn't actually see it. I didn't want the uh, epoxy to glue my call to the top. I had some uh, brace jacks underneath it and then clamped it. This side is nice and flush. This side, mm, there's a bit of a lip there. So it's not perfect. I think we can probably go ahead and fill that with something and try to smooth it out a bit more than it is. But, it's back together, it feels good and solid. You know, this laminate is so tough and so slippery that with a little bit of naphtha, I can actually scrub off the epoxy residue. I used a couple of coats of super glue in and around the crack to fill and level the area. 
and I scraped it flush using a razor blade and here I am using some wet dry sandpaper up to 1200 grit which approximated the low sheen on the rest of the instrument. There's only so much time for this kind of work on a job like this because you know I can't charge too much for it so at a certain point good enough is good enough. I got a bit of a surprise when I went to reapply the sticker because it felt sort of weird and I could peel it back and who's that? Why it's Johnny Cash. And June. Someone covered up June and Johnny with a sticker of a skull. Freaky, man. Okay, we're all back together with strings on here. Seems to be holding together pretty well. As for that little scar, yeah, you can see it and you can feel it. But it's smooth and it's unobtrusive. It looks like a little battle wound. The skull fared similarly actually. It's stretched and there are a couple of spots where it just would not lay flat and it bent over so it looks like it's got a crack in the same way that the guitar does. They're matching. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. How do we feel about high-density plastics used for bodies and inexpensive guitars? Imagine the year is 1850. You've purchased a guitar, you've broken it, and you've decided, the heck with this thing, I can't fix it, I'm just going to bury it in the garden and forget about it. I want it out of my life. You do that. You come back today and try to unearth that instrument, what would you find? Depending on the alloy, um, you might find some fret wire. And if it had mechanical tuners, those would be still around, probably. You might also, depending on the soil composition, if it's not too acidic, you might find bone for a bone nut and saddle. But other than that, everything, including the strings, gone completely, subsumed, returned to earth. This thing, I bet you, if you came back in 200 years and tried to dig this up, it would look remarkably similar to the way it does today. Um, so, you know, that's the failing I see in the design. It's difficult to repair. It's a pretty inelegant repair. Plastics, once they're broken, always look broken. Wood, you can sort of fit together in a way that looks pretty elegant if you know how to repair it. Um, there are elements of this design, design here I really like. I mean, this fingerboard is made of rich light, which is extremely hard, very long wearing, great, you know, substitute for ebony. And this neck, I mean, this neck is practically bulletproof. It's a great solution to the, the issue. It's very stable. It's made out of strips, thin strips of laminated hardwood, probably birch, I think. Don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's good and solid. It's like a baseball bat. You could take this thing off and reuse it on another guitar. It'll be good for a hundred years. So as far as I can see, this is the main failure, is the plastic laminate stuff. So I guess this is sort of an answer to all those people who ask me in the comment section of other videos whether a particular guitar I'm working on is worth repairing or not. Because as we've seen, you know, in several instances, anything is fixable if you put enough effort and time into it. And the real question becomes, you know, one, should we be making guitars that aren't fixable? And two, is it really worth throwing something away when you can fix it? We might have to start thinking in different terms. And I'm not mar knocking Martin for building a guitar like this. I mean, this was part of their bottom line. They had to make inroads into the low end of the market to remain a viable company. And this seemed to be a good idea to them at the time. And is this going to remain a good idea over the long haul? I don't know. Maybe that's not for me to say. But it's something we should be thinking about. Anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you again soon.